Three weeks ago, the people of Ukraine sent to the world a desperate call for help. Today, we're here to respond to that call. In the coming weeks, the United States government will be sending to Ukraine resources like food, medicine, weapons, and with them, American soldiers to help protect the Ukrainian people from Russian hostilities. Furthermore, in accordance with the guidelines set forth by the European Union, the United States will legally acquire Ukraine's territory for a funding donation of $2 billion. We hope that the Ukrainian citizens understand that right now, this is the best possible course of action to maintain civilian safety and peace. Are we too late? Yeah, he's dead. What limb? Right arm. Do you see it? Yeah, it's there. Charges are set. Three minutes to fireworks. Copy that. You're America. I am America. I love America. Listen, uh, there's a prisoner here. He's, uh, he's European. Shouldn't be a problem. Just leave him. Do you leave me here?
Who's your friend? Go, 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 go. Give me your glasses. Uh, uh, I, I can no see. Oh, say. Can you see? Say, can you see? Is this really necessary? Well, if he's gonna come with us, then yes, it is necessary. By the dawn... Uh, hey, Pavarotti, shut up and hold still. You don't have a passport, do you? No passport. Uh, they take it, it. Andrea Olivetti, Italian citizen. Professor of Linguistics at Kiev National University. Turn around. Spread your leg. You teach there? I, I, I write. I am poet. Oh, you're a poet? Yeah. I wrote a poem. You want to hear it? See. Si. Roses are red. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> it doesn't have a rhyme. It's a nursery rhyme. All right. Base, this is Atlas. Tell them package is secure. Yeah, and uh, we're three total. Yep, three. We're all clear. Sit down. Should eat something. Grazie, Agent Carter. That's Ross. Uh, where are we going? That's classified. Going to the closest U.S. Embassy. Get underway. You sure you still want him to come? I, I don't want to be inconvenienced to your superiors. Oh, trust me, you already are. He won't be. As long as we deliver what they ask for, they won't ask any questions. I follow orders. I stand by the laws of my country. Sometimes it's not about the law, it's about doing what's right. Does your government stand by the ideals and hey, values? Papa John, I fight for my country because it pays well. And I get to shoot people.
Good luck, Sean. Hmm? The coin. You had it in the submarine. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Worth a lot. Smart guy. Uh, it's, it's a dollar coin. My father gave it to me. Ah, uh, that's nice. He thought it was interesting. Um, it's a misprint. Uh, I don't... Yeah. One wing is bigger than the other. Ah, see. I, I, I would not notice. That's the point. Mr. Olivetti. I apologize for my delay. On behalf of the United States, I'd like to extend my sympathies for the unjust treatment you've endured. You're a powerful symbol of hope to many people. Right now, the world could use that hope. Please do us the honor of joining me for my speech this evening. I don't know what I can offer. You're a hero, sir. Heroes deserve a place in the spotlight. The real heroes, uh, Agent Carter, Agent Ross, Without them, I'd still be locked in a cage. And I believe your story is a valuable one to tell. Please join us. Okay. All right. <laughs> How do you say, uh, molto bene? How's my town? <laughs> molto bene. Molto <laughs> bene. <laughs> Diane will scorch you to get ready. Uh, Agent Carter. Good luck. I am poet, but I, I have no words. You saved my life. Just doing our jobs. No. No, you do much more. Agent Ross, you not like me, but I thank you too. <laughs> this way, please. I don't know we like the Italians that much. In fact, we don't. But I'd be willing to like them just enough to get us out of the shit we're currently standing in. Sir? Right now we're standing on a fence between two groups of people who want to eat each other. And as long as this deal goes through, I think everything will be okay. And that's what we're here to assure them of. Mr. Olivetti is a perfect reminder of our country's vast importance. A reminder of all the good we can do. Couldn't agree more, sir. By the way, next time I ask you to do something quietly, please do it quietly. No, no. We'll do that in my office. Any interest in politics? Just looking for the hockey score. Drink? Please. Oh, no, I don't drink on the job. Always on duty, that's what I like about you. So, what do you got for me? service for your country. That'll be all. Would you like our reports? Actually, no. We're not going to be submitting any official reports on this operation. All right. May I ask why? No. You may not. We're grateful for your service. I'll see you back in Washington. This way out, gentlemen. Hey, Carter. Yeah. The orders, they're always dirty. We just choose not to admit it.
Ma scusi, tanto. Do you have the speech? Meet you in the car. I forgot something. You had us steal two billion dollars of public money. And you just broke into my office. You said we were here for protection. And we are. The protection of the American people. We're taking the money back where it belongs. But what about the Ukrainians? They're dying over there. The Ukrainians are already dead. There's nothing we can do about that. I don't believe you. I always liked you, Mr. Carter. You were always loyal, and you never asked too many questions. The Foreign Affairs Committee is going to hear about this operation. They already know. They're the ones who issue the orders. Is everything okay, sir? No, Alexei. Mr. Carter broke into my office and attempted to steal private information. Search him. Sorry. I'm afraid I'm gonna need your phone. And your gun. Alexi, please escort Mr. Carter to the airport. He's got a flight home to catch. any problems. I'm a team ready to take him out as soon as he gets on the plane. you up to the podium halfway through the ceremony. He introduced you as the Italian refugee who was rescued by two American Sikh soldiers. Can you look into the camera and keep it brief? Uh, I, I, I speak. Matter of fact, you don't have to say anything. 
Are you all right? You look nervous. Uh, I don't like big crowds. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Bulletproof Kevlar vest, just a precaution. Remember, you're a hero. Do what they love best. Relax and smile. Smile. <laughs> you got that? Got it. Perfect. Are you ready? Many. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Three days ago, history was made with the United States peaceful acquisition of Ukraine. Less than 48 hours later, cyber terrorists hacked the country's server and stole the money belonging to the Ukrainian people. Tonight, we're here to take a stand. To the people of Ukraine, we say you are not alone. The great president once said, generosity is its own form of power. We vow to use our power to create a brighter future. The bullies of the world use fear to intimidate weaker nations into submission. But the United States, Italy, and the rest of Europe will not stand for this injustice. We will show the people responsible for this theft what courage looks like. Not only through our words, but through our actions. Italy and the rest of Europe are with you.
Comandante Renati a centrale. Abbiamo fatto un posto di blocco. Siamo qui in posizione pronti a intervenire. Chiediamo il permesso di sparare se necessario. Ripeto, chiediamo il permesso di sparare. Puntate! Fuoco! It's me. The rider was a decoy. They spotted the truck. 20 miles northeast. Industrial complex. I'm on my way.
Is that you, Agent Carter? I know you have many questions. Put your gun down, and I will explain, huh? You think I am just a murderer? If you give up now, I can help you survive this. No, Carter. I have come too far to survive. Once more, my life is in your hands. You're under arrest. Give me the chips. Yes. Chips. And uh, who will you give these to? Huh? Face it, Carter. You have no badge. You have no idea who to trust. You will be hunted down. They will take these and they will kill you. No matter what you do or say. I know a good man when I see one. You are a good man. What makes you say that? At least you haven't shot me yet. Why don't you... Join me. What? Come with me. And help me turn this money towards rebuilding our homes. I can't stop being who I am. Now it is time for Agent Carter to die. Wait a minute. I'm sorry about your friend. Help me understand what happened here tonight, Agent Ross. Who is responsible for the senator's death? And who killed Agent Carter? That's classified. Off the record, then. From one good guy to another. Hmm? I have questions. I need answers too. He's all yours. I know a 
good man when I see one. You are a good man. What makes you say that? At least you haven't shot me yet. Why don't you join me? What? Join me? I have come a very long way to be here. This is my chance. My chance to make a difference. A real difference. Come with me. And help me turn this money towards protecting our people. I can't stop being who I am. It's not too late, Agent Carter. You still have a choice. Your family. Do they know you're still alive? I will be giving up my identity, my nation. I will be completely lost. You, you are not lost, my friend. You have just not been home in a very long time. Sometimes it's not about the law, Agent Castor. It's about doing what's right. Right 
storm and all storm. Mike, who is that? Peter Godso. I recognize the boots. Ursula, say again. Say again, please, and go slow. The antenna snapped off. I can barely pick you up. Now, what's your emergency? Over. All right, Hatch, go out and see if you can raise her on the island services CB. Find out what her problem is, then come right back. All right. Hey, you sure you're gonna be okay? He's locked up, isn't he? Mike, do you have any idea what's going on here? Name is happening. I'll be damned if I know. Mike, are you there? Can't you get him? Wind's knocked the damned antennas over. Uh, so, uh, this is Hatch. Uh, do you read me? Come back. I'm here. I read you. Are you getting me, Alton Hatcher? Uh, you're breaking up some, but uh, it's better than was before. What's the uh, problem? Third Andrew says Lloyd Wishman has killed himself over at the firehouse. Now, Robbie Beals and Henry Bright have gone over there to investigate, Robbie says. Oh, God, what? And you let them go there? Come back? There was no way to stop Robbie. He practically shanghaied my husband, and there could be somebody down there. Where's Mike? I want to talk to Mike. Well, I'm calling from the truck. Uh, Mike's inside with the man who... The... Well, with the prisoner. Well, you just have to send him down there. Uh, well, we've got a little bit of a situation over here. Come back. Is Mike all right? Hatch, you come back and you tell me. Uh, he's fine, Mom. That's a big 10-4. Um... Uh, I've got to go. I, I'll uh, pass on the message. Uh, this is Island Service. Out. Somebody's got to take a charge, and we happen to be the ones on the scene now. Come on.
Ursula said Lloyd Wishman's dead over at the firehouse. Dead? What about Ferd? Ferd's the one who found him. Said it was suicide. I think Ursula is afraid it might be murder. Mike, uh... Robbie uh, Beals took Henry Bright over there to investigate, I guess. Road's still passable, what do you think? On a four-wheel drive, yeah. Probably till midnight after that. All right, take Kirk. Go on over to the fire station. Uh, keep your eyes open. Be careful. Find Robbie and Henry. Lock the place up and bring him back here. Yeah. We can keep an eye on our new pal while you do that, can't we, Jack? Uh, I, I don't know if that's such a good idea. Yeah, well, maybe not, but right now it's the only idea. Sorry, but that's the way it is. Space here. If we hear anything, we'll let you know. Move back. Go on, move back. 
you don't have anything else to do, go on downstairs and watch the storm on the weather network. You're weak, but I've got your hat. Talk slow and loud. Come back on. Robbie and Henry are fine. Just thought you might want to know that. Come back. Is Lloyd Wishman really dead, Hatch? Uh, Ursula, I don't have all the details on that yet. Uh, just tell Sandy and Carla that uh, their boys will be a while longer. Mike wants them over at the store for a little bit. Come back. Why the store? Is that man locked up? You boys be careful. Uh, that's all I can't hear you. You're breaking up. I'll have to try it back a little bit later on. This is Island Service out. Hell, I don't know what to tell her. I might tell her. That's his job. That's what they pay him for. Yeah. Where's your cane? You had a cane. I know you do. Where is it? Sir, how did you get to Little Tall Island? Give me what I want, and I'll go away. I saw that at Martha Clarendon's house. Did you write that? You did, didn't you? And just what is it you want, sir? Andre Lanoge. I take it you're French. Got a lot of people of French descent on the island. What happened with Peter Godzo? You have something to do with that? And how do you happen to know he was running pot out of his warehouse? Always assuming he was. I know a lot, Constable. I know, for instance, that when you were at the University of Maine and in danger of losing your scholarship over a D in chemistry during your sophomore year, you cheated on the midterm exam. Not even your wife knows that, does she? I don't know where you get your information, but you are dead wrong on that one. I'm sure that over the years you've convinced yourself that's the truth. But right now, we both know better. You ought to tell Ralphie sometime. It would make a nice bedtime story, I think. How Daddy got through college. You never cheated on an exam in college, did you, Jack? Never went to college. Nobody bothers you for pulling D's in high school. They still put you in jail for assault, though, if you get caught. You were lucky last year. You and Lucian Fournier and Alex Haber. Lucky boys. Shut up. That fella just rubbed you guys the wrong way, didn't he? Had kind of a lisp, and that blonde hair, curly like a girl's hair, not to mention the way he walked, still, three against one. Pool cues. Well, hardly sporting. I'm warning you, mister. The kid lost an eye. How about that, huh? You can go and see for yourself. He lives in Lewiston. He wears a paisley eye patch his sister made him. He lies awake at night and listens to the cars on Lisbon Street and the live bands from the bottle clubs and prays to St. Andrew to bring back the sight in his left eye. Still, he had that swishy way of walking and that lisp. And you guys kind of liked the way his hair looked all around his face like it was. Although you'd never say it to each other, would you? Kind of turned you on. All right, that's enough. Kind of made you wonder what it might feel like to run your hands through it. You no. shut up, mister. I'll shut you up, I swear. Jack, take it easy. Take it easy. There's another bedtime story for a stormy night. I can see you in bed with your arm around your little boy saying, Buster, Daddy wants to tell you how he put the nasty queer man's eye out with the All end right, of the now, pool. that's enough. <laughs> Jack. Is it bad? 
barely clipped the skin. It's lucky. Six inches to the left, I'm dead. He's laughing. Here. Hatch. Mike, about what that guy said. It's all right. We dragged him over, Mike. All right. What's going on here? Robbie, I wish I knew. and puff all night long we'll still be safe down here in the basement is daddy safe yeah yeah safe as can be he won't let the bad man get out and hurt us will he no no i promise good night sweetie Just a little scratch. My daddy put me to bed, not you. Donnie. My daddy, not you. Hey. I want you to go upstairs right now and you wait for your daddy. Now. I'm sorry, Molly. I guess I thought he was ready, but he's used to having his dad tuck him in. Well, it's fine. It's probably better that he stays up. I think Buster is still running around upstairs. They can play tag and fall asleep in a corner somewhere. As long as he didn't disturb anybody. Nah. They're out like lights. I worry about Donnie sometimes. I mean, I love him, but I, I worry about him, too. Sammy, they all go through stages. I mean, Don may have his unlovely moments now, but in the end, he'll be fine. I'm going to leave Robbie in the spring. I'm going to take Donnie and go back to my folks on Deer Isle. <laughs> I didn't think I'd made up my mind for sure, but I guess I have. <laughs> oh, Sandy. Going to help Billy? Yes, ma'am. See if there's any oatmeal on the very back shelf. And tell Billy to remember the juice. Oh, I imagine he don't have any problem in the juice department, does he?
Billy. Can I talk to you? Yeah, I guess. Why not? Billy, I just... Did you what he said? Let's talk about that. Did you go up dairy? Have an abortion? I guess that's all the talk we need. Isn't it? I guess that says it all. Well, don't you want to know why? Not particularly, no. It was our baby, and now it's dead, I guess. Really, that's all I need to know. All right, so you asked me one. Now, I'll ask you one. What about Jenna Freeman? What about Jenna Freeman? Why do you ask about something that you already know the answer to, Kat? Maybe to wipe that little minister look off your face. Yeah, I knew. The biggest tramp on the coast, and you chasing her like she's on fire, and you want to put her out. It wasn't like that at all. Then what was it like? Billy, tell me. You know, I, I don't understand it, Billy. You know, I never told you no. Never once did I tell you no. And still. God, Billy, how many times a day do you itch? What about the baby? The one I had to hear about from a complete stranger and in front of half the town. I knew who you were running with, Billy. Don't you get that? I mean, how is I supposed to trust you to do the right thing? I mean, how is I supposed to trust you at all? Do you know what it's like to find out that you're pregnant one week? And that your boyfriend is spending his afternoons with the town pump the next? Hey, that baby was half mine. And you decided to go up to Derry, and you murdered it, and it was half mine, Cat. Yes, yeah, sure. Now that it's gone, it's half yours. supposed to mean? It means that I'm not stupid. I mean, I know what you would have thought if I had come to you while you're still chasing after Jenna. Little bitch just got herself pregnant so I wouldn't get away. So now you've done a whole lot of my thinking for me too now, huh? You obviously haven't been doing much for yourself these days. What about the baby? The one that you murdered? How much thinking did you do for a baby cat? Why don't you do us both a favor and Get out of here. Just go. I'm really tired of listening to you. What's he doing? Oh, you know what? Dear God. You're unfaithful and that's bad. But you're a coward and that's worse. Too chicken to own up to the part of this that belongs to you. You know, I came in here because I, I thought that maybe I could save us. But there's nothing to save. You're just a stupid kid after all. Sir, you mind telling me?
She's right. You are a coward. What the hell are you doing? Shut up! By the step. By the step. By the back step. Back, they were slipping off. No, thanks, Annie. You can keep them. Those things always end up falling asleep listening to Schubert on my fillings anyway. Uh, why don't you give Johnny a hand, Johnny? by blast and how such conditions to continue through tomorrow and into tomorrow night when finally things are supposed to start quieting down powers out from kittery to millinocket coastal communities are cut off us island guys forget it so what's the matter i don't know I... A feeling. Really bad one. Yeah, who doesn't? Martha Clarendon's murdered. Lloyd Wishman kills himself. Storm this entry right over our heads. Who doesn't have a bad feeling? I think it's more than that. like a scream. That's what the wind sounds like tonight, dear. Cat didn't come back, did she? No, not this way. 
I imagine they have things to discuss, Joanna. My mother always used to say, peep not at a keyhole, lest you be vexed. It sounded like a scream. Oh, God, I find that ridiculous. Mother, shut up! these feelings I trust them over the years I've learned to trust them Molly I think something's happened to Peter why has someone come back from the store is Mike's no, no nobody's come in from that end of town since eight o'clock but Mike's all right there's nothing psychic about that part of it I picked up a couple of broken transmissions on the radio. Once it was Hatch, and once I'm pretty sure it was Mike. Saying what? Talking to who? With the antennas blown down, it's impossible to tell. Base unit to base unit, it's just voices. I imagine they're still trying to raise the status of Machias. So you haven't heard from Peter, so you, no, you can't know no, what's going no, Somehow I do. I do, I know it. There's a state of snow emergency. Molly, if I can get Lucian Fournier to stop fiddling with that TV and take me down to the constables on a snow machine, can you mind things here? Unless the roof falls in, all it amounts to is saying that everything is fine and breakfast is at seven. We still need folks on the serving crew and the cleanup after. The work's mostly done for tonight, thank God. People have already started going to bed. Okay. All right, just, uh... Do me a favor, give a message to Mike. Tell him to set a guard. There are plenty of men who have nothing to do tonight. Have him set a guard and get back here. Tell him his wife wants to see him. I'll give him that message. I will. People to see him like this, so I covered him up. You all right there, Molly? I'm fine. This is going to be one to tell your grandchildren about. Already is. I covered him up because I loved him. I think it was the cane with the wolf's head that made me do it. I wouldn't touch it if I were you. I loved him, and now look, I went and killed him. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle. Here is my spout. Oh my God. Okay? Don't broadcast it. Please, be careful. 
careful. Ursula, what's going on here? I haven't a clue. Never seen anyone throw a fit like that in my life. No ID of any kind? No ID, no money, no wallet, no keys, no nothing. Just no clothing tags, even not even on his blue jeans. It's just it's just here.